Gel electroporesis is a technique used to separate DNA, RNA, or protein fragments by size. Electroporesis use an electrical field to move the nucleic acid or protein fragments through the gel matrix. DNA and RNA are negatively charged and will migrate from the negatively charged electrode to the positively charged electrode. For protein samples, heat treatment and sodium to decyl sulfate is added to make the proteins unfold into linear conformation and is coated with a negative charge. Shorter nucleic acid or protein fragments will migrate faster and will be observed near the bottom of the gel. The objectives of this exercise are to describe how to prepare an agarose gel for electroporesis and to describe how to set up the gel electroporesis machine. The materials include electroporesis machine, gel casting stand, gel tray, and well comb, UV gel documentation system, 1x trees acetate edda or TAE buffer, agarose powder, 1kb DNA ladder, 6x DNA gel loading dye, etidium bromide or ETBR stain, distilled water, microwave, micropipettes, sterile pipette tips, 70% ethanol, tissue paper, fresh gloves, clear plastic wrap, Erlenmeyer flask, and the PCR product. There are two types of gel electroporesis, the horizontal and vertical gel electroporesis. Horizontal gel electroporesis is commonly used for DNA and RNA. It uses agarose gel and ETBR or CyberSafe stain. Vertical gel electroporesis is commonly used for proteins. It uses sodium to decyl sulfate, which denatures proteins, and make it negatively charged. It uses polyacrylamide gel, which can better resolve molecules based on molecular weight, and uses silver stain or kumasi dye for staining. Two common types of nucleic acid stain include the etidium bromide and cybersafe stain. Etidium bromide is an intercalating agent. It inserts itself between the base pairs in the DNA double helix, thus it is highly mutagenic. It has absorbance maxima at 285 nanometers or 300 nanometers, which falls under the UV light spectrum. ETBR has emission maximum at 605 nanometers. The DNA and etidium bromide complex fluoresce when exposed to UV light. CyberSafe dye is a less hazardous alternative to ETBR. It has UV absorbance maximum at 280 nanometers and a visible light absorbance maximum at 502 nanometers. It has emission maximum at 530 nanometers. CyberSafe dye can thus be viewed with the naked eye using blue light trans illuminator. DNA ladder or DNA marker provides size estimate of the bands or PCR amplicons on the gel after electroporesis. 1KB DNA ladder is a common DNA marker used. It contains DNA fragments with known sizes from 250 base pairs to 10,000 base pairs. The two bands with highest intensity 
at 1,000 base pairs and 3,000 base pairs corresponds to 100 and 200 nanograms of DNA concentration per 5 microliters of sample, respectively. The DNA ladder usually contains a loading die, thus it can be loaded right away. Gel documentation system is an equipment used to visualize nucleic acids and proteins resolve in an agarose or polyacrylamide gel after electroporesis. Two common types of gel documentation system include the UV gel documentation system and the blue light trans illuminator. UV gel documentation system uses ultraviolet light trans illuminator enclosed in a chamber. Bands are viewed on a screen or computer and the captured image is then saved for further analysis. One major disadvantage of using UV light to view nucleic acid is that it may cause damage to the DNA during long exposures and thus may significantly alter the DNA sequence result. Blue light trans illuminator is commonly used to visualize gels stained with cyber safe dye. Blue light trans illuminator eliminates DNA damage when viewed for longer periods, especially during gel excision. The first step in gel electroporesis is to make an agarose gel where samples are loaded for analysis. Agarose gel concentration may range from 0.5 to 2%. Smaller DNA fragments can be better resolved using gels with higher agarose concentration. Whereas, samples like genomic DNA with higher molecular weight can be better resolved using less agarose concentration. For 0.7% agarose gel, weigh 0.7 grams agarose powder in analytical balance, put in a flask and dilute with 100 ml 1x TAE buffer. Microwave to dissolve the agarose powder completely. Be careful in microwaving the agarose in a flask because it might overflow from the flask when it starts to boil. Always look inside the microwave and once there are bubbles, stop the microwave and shake the flask intermittently. Do this until there are no more visible agarose powder and bubbles in the solution. Prepare the gel casting stand, put the gel tray and well comb, and then pour the agarose gel carefully. Avoid making bubbles when pouring the agarose gel. If there are visible bubbles in the gel, you can use a pipette tip to prick the bubbles. If there are bubbles or air pockets in the gel, it will interfere with the migration of the DNA in the gel during electroporesis. Wait for the gel to solidify about 20 to 30 minutes. Then take out the well comb and load the gel tray with the gel into the gel box. Fill the gel box with 1x TAE buffer. Submerge the gel with the buffer completely. Clean the workbench with 70% ethanol and wipe the surface with tissue or tablecloth. Using a parafilm, prepare 1 to 2 microlit of the 6x DNA gel loading dye for 5 to 10 microlit of PCR sample. The DNA gel loading dye will allow for the tracking of the DNA fragment migration 
during electrophoresis. The DNA gel loading dye contains glycerol which adds density to the DNA sample so it will not diffuse in the buffer. Pipette 5 microlit of the PCR sample and mix with the 1 microlit DNA gel loading dye prepared on the parafilm. Always use sterile pipette tips for each PCR sample. Load 5 microlit of the sample into the gel carefully. The gel is transparent and careful attention should be taken in loading the sample on each well. Make sure to load the DNA marker on the first well followed by the negative control. All samples that will be loaded should be labeled properly and should be loaded with respect to their positions or arrangement. Record the labels and sequence of samples that will be loaded in the gel. These will be used as the reference when the gels are viewed after electroporesis. After loading the samples, put the cover of the gel box. Connect the electrodes to the gel box. The black electrode is negative while the red electrode is positive. Always position the wells with the PCR sample near the negative electrode. DNA is negatively charged and will migrate from the negatively charged electrode towards the positively charged electrode. Turn on the power supply. Set the time for 40 minutes and voltage to 100 volts. After setting the running time and voltage, press start. You can observe the migration of the loading die on the gel during electroporesis. Do not allow the die front to move out of the gel. Once complete, turn off the power supply. Carefully transfer the gel into a plastic wear. Submerge the gel in 100 ml 1x TAE buffer and add 5 to 10 microlit of ETBR stain. Label the container properly. ETBR is metagenic. It should be disposed properly in waste jars after use. Wear fresh gloves and lab gown when handling ETBR. After staining, distain the gel with distilled water in a plastic ware for 5 minutes. Carefully mount the gel into the UV gel documentation system for viewing. Put a clear plastic wrap on the gel documentation system to prevent contamination with the ETBR stain. Close the gel dock and turn on the UV lamp. Take a photo of the gel image and then save. Bands or amplicons can also be excised from the gel for purification. Purified amplicons can be cloned in plasmids for sequencing. Avoid long exposure of DNA samples to UV if samples are to be sequenced. I will be presenting actual agarose gel electroporesis results using ETBR and ultra power DNA safe stains. This result is an agarose gel image showing amplicons of cellulase genes from Streptomyces silicolor. 5 microliters of PCR product and 1 kb DNA marker were loaded in 1% agarose gel and electroporased for 20 minutes at 120 volts. The gel was stained with etidium bromide and viewed under UB gel documentation system. 
The negative control used was distilled water. The table shows the expected size of the PCR products. This result is an agarose gel image showing amplicons of 16S rDNA from 8 bacterial genera, 10 microliters of PCR product and 1 kb DNA ladder were loaded in 1% agarose gel and electroporist at 100 volts for 40 minutes. The gel was stained with ultra power DNA safe dye and viewed using blue light trans illuminator. The negative control used was distilled water. The table shows the expected amplicon size for each bacterial genus.